Hi friends, this is Shay. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the releases on my radar for the month of October 2020. If you're unfamiliar with this series, this is a series in which I talk about all of the upcoming releases I'm excited for. This list is extensive and long, so I'm not going to give too many details about any of the titles, but I will be putting images here and the dates that they will be available to you. Welcome, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get going. So starting on October 1st, we have Tudor Christmas Tidings. This is coming out from Harlequin. This contains three short Christmas stories. I have read this. Um, if you want more details, check out my vlog that should be out tomorrow. And then we have Uninhibited from the Savage Wild series. This one is like a drummer romance and the inner drummer in me just has to read this. I'm too curious. <laughs> So this is going to be interesting. It might be full on Rockstar. I'm not 100% sure, but he's got drumsticks on the cover. Like I had to, I'm sorry. All right, moving on to October 6th. We have the code for love and heartbreak. This involves two coders. This is a YA contemporary romance. This looks absolutely adorable and I just really want to read it. We've got Mistletoe and Mr. Right. This is the sequel to The Tourist Attraction. This is um, about a small town in Alaska or at Christmas time. It's really sweet. It's got a single parent element to it as well and I really enjoyed it. And then we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is plus size geeky romance featuring fanfic. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed this. One of my favorite reads of September. And then we've got The Woman I Was Before. This is kind of a more suspense kind of title so I do plan on reading it soon. Great for spooky season really excited. Moving on to the manga for this week. Um, we did have Hatsu Haru Volume 12 that did get bumped to this week. Originally it was supposed to release the 22nd of September but it got pushed back two weeks. By the way for manga outside of Viz titles everything is fluctuating quite a bit so these dates are pretty loose. I did check them last night so they are as accurate as they can be. An Incurable Case of Love Volume 5. This is an adult Jose series that is heavily romance. We hit the smutties in Volume 4 so I'm definitely looking forward to Volume 5. We've got two series that are finishing. We've got Our Hard Ride Volume 13 which I've already read and I loved. We also have Demon, The Demon Prince of Emochi House Volume 16 which again is the final volume. And then we've got Moriarty the Patriot Volume 1. I read this just recently. You ended up really enjoying it. Gave it four stars. Um, definitely on the darker side. So it's a James Moriarty backstory. It's fantastic. Then we've got Prince Freya Volume 3. Y'all can finally get your healing balm from Volume 2 with this volume. And just wait till the last page. I promise it's worth it. This has been my favorite volume thus far. And then we've got Yon of the Dawn Volume 26, another volume that I got an early copy of. This volume, something that's needed to happen since like Volume 2 finally happens. So... I promise, just just read it, okay? Just read it. But not least for the sixth, we have Our Precious Conversations Volume 7. I love this series with so much of my being. I really want physical prints of this. So y'all just need to support this one so we'll get physical copies because their awkwardness is just too adorable and I can't even. All right, moving on to October 13th. We have Season of Joy by Annie Rains. This was a fantastic single parent romance at Christmas time. It's so cute. I loved it. And then we've got Scandal and the Runaway Bride. I've got an early e-copy of this. I don't know too much about it yet, but Runaway Bride just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we had The Last Cowboy Christmas. Again, Cowboy Christmas. Don't know too much yet. Haven't read it, but looking forward to it. And then we have After Hours Redemption. I know this one we're dealing with like a record exec and... I don't know if it's a music writer or a musician in general. I can't remember. It's like a music exec and a record label person. I don't remember. But they both work in the music industry and this just looks really, really fun. And then we have A Princess by Christmas. I actually just finished this last night. It was really cute. I really like it. And then we have The Highland Laird by Amy Jarecki. I'm really into Highlander romances right now. The first Amy Jarecki I read I didn't really love, but I've loved the ones that I've read since. So I'm definitely excited for this one. Then we have Any Rogue Will Do. I'm in a historical mood, y'all. So here we are. And then we've got The Lost Love Song. This just seems like a deeper, more somber almost kind of romance. And for some reason it spoke to me. I don't know if it was the cover. I don't know if it was when I initially read the description. I don't remember, but I enjoyed it. 
and I'm looking forward. And then we've got The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This one we're dealing with um, the author who wrote The 10,000 Doors of January, and I liked the writing well enough that I want to try this one. Though Jan The 10,000 Doors of January wasn't a favorite of mine, I do think this might be more up my alley. And then we've got Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. This is a, another contemporary romance, and I liked Faker, the first book in the series, enough that I want to try this one. And then we have A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. This is, I believe, a more contemporary romance where the, where the Julia London one is very historical. But either way, I love Jenny Holiday, so I'm totally going to read the snot out of this. And then we have The Twelve Dates of Christmas. Y'all, it's just The Twelve Dates of Christmas. I mean, it's going to be cute. It's going to be adorable. I'm excited. And then moving on to the manga for that week, we have Fangirl, the manga volume one. I did read volume one early. I ended up enjoying it. So I put this on here. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up in manga form or not, but I figured you guys might like to know what's coming out. So we've got Comey Can't Communicate volume nine. Y'all know I love Comey. I've read this volume already. It's good. I promise. Love it. We get some more Comey and Tadano movement and we love Comey and Tadano movement, you know. And then we've got Something's Wrong With Us volume three. This is more of like a suspenseful, messy Jose romance. And with where volume two ended, I'm really curious what's gonna happen in volume three. Like, I I need to know, I just do. And then we have Blue Period volume one. This is one that is very art inspired. I don't know too much about it yet, but all of the art that I've seen from it looks absolutely fantastic. So I wanted to give this one a try. We've got two volumes of manga coming out from Seven Seas this week that I'm thriving to have both. First, we have the Ancient Mangus Bride volume 13. Y'all know this is one of my favorite manga series currently publishing. I thrive on this series. It's just so good. Yes. And the next one is a new series and it's called Cutie and the Beast. Look at this cover, y'all. How can you not tell me this is going to be adorable? So look, I believe he's a professional wrestler and I think she's like his fan or something, but it has some Beauty and the Beast vibes going on with it. I don't know how, but it's called Cutie and the Beast and I, I'm living, I'm thriving. I need a big burly man with a man bun. <laughs> I have a big burly man, but he would look bad with a man bun, so he's not going to have one. But anyways... I, I need this in my life. I just do. Okay, okay. All right, moving on to October 20th. We've got Snapped by Alexa Martin. This is book four in her football-based series. I've read the first two. I keep not finding book three at my bookstore, but I did get an early copy of book four, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. And then we've got Among the Beasts and Briars. This looks like it's got fairy tale hints to it. Yes, we thrive. We're loving it. And then it's lots of manga this week, so let's dive in. A lot of the Kodansha stuff got moved to this particular week, so some of that might move again, but heads up on that. So I've got Blue Flag Volume 4. I've already read this. I love it so much. Y'all, this series! It's about four teenagers explain, exploring what romantic love is and their gender identities. It's fantastically done. I honestly love it. And then we've got Sweat and Soap Volume 4. I love this couple so very much and I will read every volume that comes out and I have yet to give one less than five stars. <laughs> then we've got Yuzu the Pet Vet Volume 3. This is just a really cute one geared towards younger younger audience like young YA, late middle grade, about a girl who's getting over her fear of animals by working at her uncle's pet clinic while her mom is dealing with an illness in the hospital. It's really sweet. I really love it. And then we have Sailor Moon the Eternal Edition Volume 10. This is the final volume in the Eternal Editions. And yes, there will be a Sailor Moon reread once I have this in my hands. So yes, that's happening. And then we've got a new series. I think this one's just rele releasing digitally for now, and that's The Witch and the Beast. This just looked really interesting to me and I wanted to try it. Then we have one that I have been waiting like a solid year and a half for, and that is Wotakoi Volume 4. I am so excited with the look of this cover. I really need this in my life like yesterday. So I'm, yes, we're finally getting it. And yes, I will probably reread the first three volumes to refresh everything before I read Volume 4. Volume 2 of the Collector's Edition of Chobits. Um, I love these hardback editions that they're printing right now, so I'm definitely going to be getting that. We've got Perfect World Volume 3. This is a 
Jose title with some disability rep as he is in a wheelchair. It is told from an ableist perspective, so it does have some issues and problems with that, but volume two is much stronger than volume one. So on this series, I suggest giving it a three volume try and going from there. And then another one I think that is just releasing digitally is The Writer and His Housekeeper. Again, this just looks right up my alley, definitely in that romance landia that I like to live in. And then last but not least for the 20th, we have Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, Volume 11. Y'all, you all need to read this series. Political fantasy shoujo really needs to get more love. I mean, we've got Requiem of the Rose King, we've got Yona of the Dawn, and we've got Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. Y'all need to send some love to Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. It's so good. All right, that is it for that week. Moving on to the final week of October 27th. We've got Blacklisted by Jay Crownover. I love this. This is the Loveless Texas series, I believe. But I love this series from Jay Crownover. They are some of my favorites, and the smut is... It's so good. And then we've got the Christmas Backup Plan. Again, looks like a nice little country romance. Super excited about that. We have Crazy Stupid Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. How I've not read this yet, I don't know because I have an early copy and I've had it for a while. I gotta make this happen sooner rather than later. And then we have The Duke Effect, but it's another historical, definitely excited. It looks super good. I remember loving the description on this one. All right, and then moving on to manga for this week. We've got Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight, Volume 11. This is a really cute shoujo series and it's coming to the end soon. And then we are getting another series by this mangaka, I believe. I believe they're doing A Sign of Affection as well. I don't remember for sure. I think so. But we're getting A Sign of Affection physically next year. But this one, I think it's coming to an end soon. I want to say it's volume 12 or 13 is the final. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me. And then we've got Don't Toy With Me as Nagatoro volume 4. I just read volume 3 for Fall Into Manga Love. So if you want more of my thoughts, you can check that out check out that vlog. And then we've got Love Massage Volume 7. I'm a couple of volumes behind on this one, but this is an erotic massage manga. Like, y'all. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Um, and then we've got Volume 2 of Sue and Tai Chan. Let's go to something pure for a second here. Um, this is obviously an elderly cat, like a senior cat, and a kitten, and their interactions together. It's adorable. And then we have Welcome to the Volume, Volume 10. It's been a while since we've gotten a volume of this, so I'm really excited. I really want to catch up. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I did volume dance as a teenager, so, like, I understand a lot of what's going on in this manga. We've got two more here. We've got Nicola Traveling Around the Demon's World, Volume 3. This is a really fun slice of life story. And Girl from the Other Side, Volume 9, which will be perfect for spooky season. I am beyond excited. So that is my list, my friends. Again, I didn't give you too many details on any of these because there are so many, but these are the things that I'm excited about. If I own them digitally, I probably won't be picking them up physically in this month unless budget wise that allows. I've got to, I've got to like hold back a little bit y'all. It got crazy in the last quarter. So I'm trying to like slow things down a bit. So if I have it digitally, I may not pick it up physically, but I'm still really excited about everything. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below any releases that you're excited for in the month of October as I can't keep track of everything. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.